Well, these days, mention the name of Sir Charles Todd and it's just as likely to bring the response, Sir Charles who? Well, those Australians who do recognise the name probably associate it with the largely dry riverbed in the middle of Alice Springs. But Sir Charles Todd arguably did more than any other individual to bring Australia into the age of electronic communications. He also kept an extraordinary record plotting the country's weather and news for 30 years. Journals that, as Simon Roll reports, Todd's family feared were lost forever. Until now. Well, he was an amazing man, um, and I really feel that uh, something should be done, I suppose, to try and conserve some of his material and, um, and his legacy to the state. A Renaissance man is exactly what he was. He had this vital interest in new technology of the time, and I think it would be true to say that he was an investigative scientist of the best sort of his era also. At first glance, this nondescript room at the Adelaide Weather Bureau and this collection of pages mightn't appear much, but this is arguably one of Australia's great scientific and cultural treasures, the journals of Sir Charles Todd. That joy of discovery, of, of bettering society, they're all there in things like that. So the journals themselves really become uh, a doorway for people in our day into the times of the past. And as you open that door, it's quite eerie at times. You get so immersed in it that you feel you know, opening up in front of you is the story of how Australia has developed. That national story and the life of Sir Charles Todd are far more entwined than generally realised. Todd came to South Australia in 1855 as the government observer and supervisor of electric telegraphs. His brainchild became a wire through the heart of the country, the overland telegraph to Darwin, which was the 19th century's equivalent of being the first with broadband. He saw isolation and he tried to get over that. So that was the rationale behind the electric telegraph, was to break down distance. He refused to be tyrannised by it, to pinch he the did. title of someone else's book. He did, yeah, exactly. And he, he took that to a far greater extent than anybody ever thought he would, which culminated in 1870 to 72 with the building of the Overland Telegraph. I like to think actually of Charles Todd also as our first internet pioneer. The telegraph is actually what made weather observations and weather forecasting possible. Prior to that, of course, they would have waited up to two to three weeks to get the weather data in. At that stage, of course, it was far too late to draw weather maps. Australians could now ask their distant kin those fundamental human questions. What's news and how's the weather? Every day for 30 years, Todd recorded the answers in his journals. 65 of them in total, 12,000 days of weather from 1879 to 1909. Mac Benoy says this is the first weather map produced in Australia, still as vivid as the day Todd coloured it in by hand. Here we've got the first weather forecast, actually, that we have in notice has ever been recorded. Mac Benoy is a former lecturer in information systems. Two years ago, he and a team of eight volunteers started taking apart the Todd journals so they could be scanned and digitised. They now have more than 40,000 images. And our concern um, as a group has been to actually capture that data um, so that it doesn't get lost, uh, because all of these things being on paper of course, uh, they're either inaccessible um, or they start to disintegrate. So um, our emphasis has been to capture this because it has been considered um, a unique collection of weather data for that 30-year period. But with the daily weather maps, Todd also waited patiently for the newspapers of each capital to be delivered by rail. And then, along with the weather maps, he clipped out weather news articles of the day. Well, that's what makes Todd's journals unique. And the more things change, the more they stay the same. There's bad news from Tehran. The states are fighting over the River Murray and an engineer named Nikola Tesla wants to harness the power of Niagara Falls to send a message to Mars. We presume he never got an answer back, otherwise he wouldn't have known about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's that unusual combination of scientific observation and the news of the day that's captured interest beyond South Australia. Todd was fascinated by the great floods in Brisbane in 1893. Certainly it was a devastating um, period in, in Queensland's history, in Brisbane's history, and it's important that um, it wasn't only Brisbane, it was um, a lot of areas throughout South East Queensland. And according to Brian Randall of the Queensland State Library, 
Queenslanders today are just as interested in their occasionally capricious weather as Todd was. It's certainly one of the most common uh, questions that we're asked um, and um, researchers are constantly revisiting the, um, the various floods that have um, taken place in Brisbane. For historian Rob Lynn, there's also a personal aspect to this. His wife is one of Sir Charles Todd's great-great-grandchildren and the family had feared these journals were lost. One of the elders of the family who, who died just over 12 years ago had inherited a great deal of the Todd uh, manuscripts and the Todd memorabilia and she very diligently placed them in, in archives and other repositories where, we, where she felt they would be best looked after. Uh, some of them have since disappeared entirely and we'd been wondering where these had got off to. So it was quite wonderful to hear that they existed. It's now planned to put the journals online and there's been interest in them from as far afield as England from a researcher studying climate change and the Indian Ocean. Both Rob Lynn and Mac Bernoy say for too long Todd's been undervalued but perhaps that too is now changing. Well I think he's one of the forgotten heroes and we don't, we're not great on heroes and heroines in Australia anyway. I feel that it would be useful if, if, if out of this project eventually came a, a focal point uh, for a Charles Todd uh, conservation event. So where all of this will take us, I don't know, but it would be nice to have a Todd collection, much as we have a Mawson collection um, in South Australia.